right, welcome back to Honeydew Acres. In this video, we're going to be making a long hive. Uh, there's going to be some voiceovers as the audio didn't come out as well as I was hoping it was going to. And quite frankly, I forgot to put some commentary in there. Uh, but before then, we're going to do a little update, walk the animals real quick, say hello to the pigs, and just kind of check out what this winter wonderland is. Not sure if it's gonna show up in the video or not, but uh, it is snowing. We're supposed to get another three to six inches of snow tonight, so should be pretty good. And then we're also gonna test out the audio. I got a new camera that I'm recording on right now. And we're gonna see how the audio comes out, hopefully pretty well. Here you can see Carl using a dado blade to cut the ledges that the frames and the top covers will be sitting on. The hive body is made out of a 2x12 that we cut down the length. Go right there. Two screws per side? I'm sorry? Two, two screws per corner? I typically do four. Oh. I think three would be more than ample. Not like there's a lot of pressure trying to pull this apart once it's together. Alright, that's it, it's done. I'm one of those, if a little does a little good, a heap of do a heap of good. Bottom or top? Uh, I think I'm going to go right here to start with. But would it work for medium frames? Yes. Yes, it would. You just gave me a thought because I've got a tube of tin out here and I'm going to make one out of. That's a good idea. There you go. Perfect. And that still gives you a little side room. Um, if it gets shifted all the way one way or another, it won't fall down in there. Because um, I looked at one that a guy um, purchased. And if you didn't have these perfect, this was too wide. Too wide, and it would they would fall down in there. So oh, I think that's perfect. Cool. One more screw. And then we got one assembled. Well, kind of. Oh, great. It just, it just walks in. Really? Yep. Cool. Now slide it all the way down and it'll just fit just fine. Yep. Oh, good, good. Beautiful. So really, like this is the first one. All you all you really have to have on these is a bottom and a top. You can do as much as you want to to them. I typically put a vent in the ends, a smaller one, and when I put the bottom in, I put a vent in it. I put legs on them, and when I put my tops on, do hinges back there, raise it that way away, do it on that side, and raise it this way, the hinges go here, that way when you're working your bees, you're on the back side of the entrance. Yes. So you're on the back of the hive. Mm -hmm. I like that better. So I, when you do the uh, vents on the sides, do you plug them in the winter or leave them open in the winter? Um, usually by the time I get to plugging them, they're filled full of propolis. Except they'll leave a little bitty spot. So I figured the bees probably know more about what they're doing than I do. Fair enough. Um, but let's say I've crammed them all down to this much. 
this one I'll plug because nobody can get down here anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just my own thinking. It doesn't mean anything to the bees, I guess. But I figure if the bees have access to that one all the time, <coughs> because I've noticed in the spring, they'll pop it open again. Yep, and when they need more ventilation. Yep. So here I'm going to start cutting out the bottom and top of the hive. This is done using three quarter inch plywood. We're installing the bottom of the hive here from the piece that I just cut out. We add glue to all of the seams to prevent wind from blowing through the hive. What the heck? Did you miss? No. That one need longer? No, it stopped shooting nails. Okay. Even though it's got nails. Uh oh. There it comes out. Yeah. yeah. Now I was going through this, I'm like, why is this board still wobbling around? <laughs> I don't know where. Nail there, nail there, no nail there. It stopped right here. Okay. Weird. You know why? I don't. Good. Neither do I. Thought you were going to say something insightful. That was it. That's as in insightful as I get. That didn't sound like nails either. But it yeah, is nails. Yep. Okay. Here you can see on the right hand side is a natural defect in the wood that goes all the way through. We'll use so that. What we're as doing is drilling vent holes on, on the each end field. and the bottom for yep. the bees. Got the tips pointed out or poking out so that way they should. Next, we're going to start installing the legs. We do this while the hive is still upside down. <laughs> Welcome back. So it's the next weekend. We're going to continue working on these beehives. Long hives, right? That's what they're called? Yes. And we got to burn the insides. So that'll be our next step. And I'm going to put a couple holes in this. And you're going to put a couple holes in it. And what are those holes for? We got an entrance at either end. Gotcha. And, um, that one, we're using one that is a natural one from where a limb protruded. And now this one is going to be two holes in it. And what's the purpose of burning them like this? Well, the bees like it dark. The darker the better. Um, other than that, it doesn't do a whole lot that's been proven, but a lot of people just like it. I am one that just likes it. But if you think about bees in the natural world, they look for a place to go, they go into a cavity in a tree, half of those are where lightning have struck and burned the tree. That's true. So basically we're trying to mimic nature. Correct. 
Need one of those uh, weed torches. Yes. Just taking a look at the bee box. Beehive, you can see this is what it looks like after it's been burnt. All right, what's the next step? All right, the next step is to build our frame for the roof. Okay. So front, back, and two sides. Front, back, two sides. Fair enough. I gotta put my glasses on to even see this. Mm -hmm. They won't say a word. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like doing them right on top of here, and the reason I like doing them on top of here, because I've been asked this before, Often you've got those little, like right there, there's not an eighth, but over a sixteenth inch gap. So my thinking is when you do it on top of here like this, you just get a better seal. If Since this board's a little lower, this one's going to be a little lower. So it closes up a lot of that gap. Alright, now we're going to add some screens to these holes. We don't want the bees to use these as entrances, and we don't want anything to be able to climb into it. Now I'm going to add hinges to the lid. As you can see, I'm working on the front side of the hive, so you want the lid to swing towards the front of the hive, so that way when you're working your bees, you're on the back side of the hive. It's another good view of that natural entrance as well. There is a total of three hinges to put on the drive. Here, Carl's cutting out the top covers for the hives. All right, so now we have the top covers to our beehive. And just to put some visuals so you guys can understand how this works, here's a standard frame. Here's a standard frame for a beehive. Those go right in here. They sit on this inner rail, and then this cover will go right over top of it. So you'll have four different covers that you'll have access to. What I'm getting ready to do is drill a vent hole in the top of them. So the screens are on, they're downside, and then the nice thing about it is when you're working on your hive and you open this lid up, they actually can't come up and see you. The next thing is, we're going to add these little handles to the tops so that way we can grab these cover boards off. Phillips bit. No, when you're trying to go backwards, it's not mm -hmm. going to go down. Just so you know, I don't know if you know that or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the correct term was screw it. Screw it, yeah, yeah, I've said that a lot. And the point of the glue is just to help seal it up a little bit. Yeah. And it makes me feel good. Everything to make you feel better. Yeah. Ready? Um... We're adding the plywood roof from the pieces I cut out earlier. That's the right side. Which way do you think? Right here. You must have hit it. Mm hmm. We're adding a wooden handle to lift the lid up that Carl cut out of a scrap piece of 2x4. There we go. It's a really good idea. It works really well. Nice, good, cheap handles. Yeah, 
That's actually a really good idea. I didn't thought about that. All right, let's get the roof. I didn't capture this in video, but if, as you can see here, we added a chain. This chain is to catch the lid as we open it up Where to prevent it from opening too far. I moved it on you. You did. You're welcome. You're, you yep. learned that from the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Bet you he's awesome though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Let's go with that. Let's see. This time you got to play with these to get them the way you want them. I don't think anybody's going to be able to see both sides at one time. I can. Can you? Well. Yeah, magic eyes. You want her in the edge or you want it in further? Uh, in, uh, it doesn't matter. I usually go in one side, but. All right. We're cutting off the excess metal from the roof. So now what's the point of doing this? Because I have a tendency, as a lot of people do, of walking into the corners. And um, it keeps from keeps from gutting you. So it just makes it a little bit safer. Yeah, yeah, that's the main point of it. So now we're adding a little bit of uh, styrofoam insulation at the top. This is one and a half inches thick. I believe it's an R7 is what it comes out to. Yeah, I like the hive as well. So this is our completed hive. There's some finishing touches. Obviously, we got to take and caulk the, the seams, and we're going to go ahead and paint it so that way it's a little bit more weather resistant. Got the nice little handle here. Pop it up. Chain holds the lid. Like I said, access to your inner covers. Easy to get into. The nice thing about these style hives is it puts everything at working height, so you're not hunched way over working on anything, and you're not going to have to pick up a 70 to 90 pound super full of honey. I'm just going to pull individual frames out as you need them. Well, we're done with the chores. And you should be done watching the video now, so I hope everybody enjoyed. I want to say thank you for subscribing, sharing, liking, watching. Come back and join us on Honeydew Acres. we got uh, chicks on the way. I believe they should be here at the end of the month. We should have referred us 40 meat chickens. We got another chicken tractor to build. We're gonna build uh, the Salatin style, I believe it is called, so we can compare the two. Uh, we'll have calves coming, and then eventually we'll have piglets this fall. Again, thanks everybody.